Hello everybody! Welcome to Creating the Basic Adaptable Game Engine Library, Part 61, Plane Dodger, Spawning Collectibles. We've made a lot of good progress on the Plane Dodger game. We have the infinite scrolling background, we have a player, and we're simulating gravity for the player, and we've spawned enemies on a periodic basis. We've even made the enemies speed up slowly over time. Our next feature is going to be spawning collectible objects. In this case, these will be small stars that appear every few seconds off the right hand side of the screen, and they're going to appear kind of using the same logic we use to spawn enemies. But by collecting these stars, the player earns points, which we will display in a label, and it will be a way for the player to measure their progress in the game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the development environment. And here we are with IntelliJ. All right, so the things we need to do are kind of similar to the setup we have for the enemies. So we're gonna create a group called star group. And we'll also load that texture we use for stars one time in the initialization function. So public texture star text. And finally, we'll need something to keep track of how much time has elapsed since the previous star has appeared. So we'll create a public double star timer. All right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and initialize some of these things in the initialize method. So we'll do this towards the end of the method. Let's go ahead and say star group equals a new group. And we need to be sure that we always add whatever we're working with to the main group. We'll also go ahead and load the star texture. That's a new texture contained in the images directory at star.png. And we'll start off the star timer at also two seconds. Maybe we'll have a new star spawn every two seconds or so. All right, uh, let's see. We need to create a label eventually, and we will do that at a future point. Okay, next, we're gonna go ahead and set up a block of code, which again, looks kind of like this. So maybe I'll actually start off by copy pasting this block of code. All right, so from the star timer, this code runs 60 times a second, so I want to subtract 1 60th of a second. And then, when the star timer decreases below zero, it's time to spawn a new star. So for the star, we'll set the texture to be the star text. Then we'll create a random star y component, kind of the same bounds. The stars will also appear slightly off screen. Stars need a physics object as well, but they won't be going nearly as fast. And maybe we'll have stars travel at a constant speed. Maybe they'll travel at the same speed the ground is traveling, perhaps, so it looks like they're floating. What was the speed the ground was traveling at? That was 150. And so by having the stars move at the same speed as the ground, it'll look like the stars are floating in midair, which will be fine for our purposes. So 150, the angle of motion needs to be 180, so it's moving to the left. And then we'll add the star to the star group. We'll reset the star timer, and then the star speed. Now there is no such thing as star speed. Just kidding. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now let's go ahead and just make sure that this works. We haven't added interactivity yet, but we will soon as we verify that stars do appear randomly as expected. And everything's compiling. I'll go ahead and let the plane fly past the bottom of the screen, that's fine. Yep, and there we go. So the stars are appearing at the same time as the enemy planes. You can actually see how much quicker the enemy planes are going because while well, they're moving past the stars. This just looks really good. All right, one thing I always like to do with collectible items, I like to add a little bit of movement or animation. So in this case, and just to make sure they don't look like part of the scenery, maybe we'll also add an action to each one of these. 
right, so let's say star. Maybe we'll do this before we add it to the group. Star dot add action. Let's see, what I'd really like to do is kind of a little wiggle back and forth, and I'd like that to repeat forever. So we're going to use a sequence of nested actions. Let's see, so this is going to be action dot forever. Within that, we'll have an action sequence. Sequence. Which consists of two actions. Right, first, a rotate by. Let's see, this is in degrees, and not a whole lot. So maybe a wiggle 10 degrees to the left and 10 degrees to the right. And how quickly do I want this to happen? So kind of like, just maybe half a second. Let's try that. Uh, 10, 0 0.5. And then action dot rotate by negative 10. It's going back in the other direction for half a second. All right, so that should cause the stars to kind of wiggle back and forth. Let's go ahead and give that a run. Let's see how that code there works. And another thing we probably should do for cleanup purposes is once an object passes past the left hand side we probably want it to be removed from memory as well okay I do see a little bit of a wiggle it's not very much that's okay hmm also it looks like they're kind of wiggling to the right and then back right and then back so maybe what I'll do uh, first I'd like maybe more of a wiggle Let's try maybe 30 degrees. And let's start off by rotating it to one side by 15 degrees. So star dot, let's see, set angle to negative 15. This way it'll appear to go kind of back and forth instead of just to one side. Right, and hopefully that'll be a slightly more magnified effect. That's pretty nice. I kind of like that. And wiggling back and forth. And also, while we're adding actions, we have a bound to action. I kind of want to bound the player plane to the screen as well. So maybe uh, this will be in the initialize method where we set up the player. Let's also say player dot add action. This will be action dot uh, this is going to be bound to screen, and in this case, the screen is 600 by 800 pixels. All right, so just so we can actually see the player at all times. And possibly you might want to, you know, not only destroy the player if it hits an enemy plane, but also if it hits the ground. Okay, there you go. And kind of bring that plane back up by pushing the space bar. It'll kind of sit up there. It's kind of interesting too. If I tap the spacebar and then let it go, it kind of hovers for a while because it has a little bit of built up speed. So that's kind of an interesting feature. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now I want to add a label to the game so we can keep track of how many stars the player has collected or some number of points awarded for each star. All right, so let's see. Let's create a public label. I'll call this score label. Let's also create an integer to store the score as well. So public int score. Okay, for score label, let's go ahead and set that down here. Score label will equal a new label. We must always initialize our labels. I'm going to use an Arial font, rather large, because it's really only going to display a number. Let's see, score label will set the position. I'd like it to be centered on the x-axis and kind of near the top of the screen. So maybe something like 40. And then group.add score label. Let's also set the initial text. 
score label dot set text to be I really don't want any words or I do want a very minimalistic interface so I'll just say set this to be score all right and technically that's not okay because it requires an int or it requires a string and I'm trying to pass it an int so I'll do a very silly trick I'll add an empty string to the int and that will change the type to string all right so let's also add something where we check if the player is overlapped with a star and so we're finally going to add some interactivity between the player and the different objects so let's see for say I need to say entity you know I've always wanted to be able to say this I've wanted to be able to say for every sprite star in this is going to be star group dot get list right the only problem with this command is that star group returns a list of entities not a list of sprites so this is something I've been thinking about for a while maybe we'll change the base code a little bit so we can do something like say get a sprite list right if we know that we're just working with a set of sprites that will make the code a little bit cleaner so you know, we're creating this library so we can go ahead and add that functionality let's go over to the group class and we do have a get list method let's also for convenience have a new method public array list to return a list of sprites get sprite list and we'll say return new array list of sprites from list now unfortunately this isn't going to work because list has a it, well it's a type of entities and we really need to go through the list then cast things to sprites and then add it to this list Right, really we're just uh, we're not really improving or not improving performance here we're just moving some of the technical complexities to this class so we don't have to worry about it in games later on so that code won't work instead let's say realist sprite sprite list equals new array list of sprites and then let's say for everything in this particular list so for each entity e in list I want to say sprite list dot add and cast that entity into a sprite class object and then we'll just return the sprite list And in theory, we could even go back into some of our previous classes and use this new get sprite list method to make the code a little bit easier to read, a little bit shorter. But for now, I think this probably looks good. And if we go back to the plain Dodger class, suddenly, hey, things compile pretty nicely. Now we can say if the player overlaps the star, and we want to do a few things let's say score plus equals and however many points you want um, for now I'll change that to one or I'll add it by one get one point per star then let's also set the text of the label so score label dot set text and again we could do something like this plus score and to make sure it's the right class we could also do something like um, integer uh, to string score. That looks a little bit nicer. It's a little bit more clear what we're doing. Let's see. We also we can get rid of the star now. So I need to say star group dot remove star. All right, and I think that's all that we need. Let's go ahead and give this a run. 
So this time, we're hoping that we can collect the star objects, and furthermore, that the number of stars that we've collected is displayed in this text object. All right, so go on up. I might change that. Oh, come on, come on, can you get it? Yes. All right, I think I need to lower that label a little bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Might just want to change some of the colors for this as well. Right, just to give it a little bit more contrast. And so let's also do some these graphical improvements. Let's see, what can we change in the label class? I think we can change the font color. We can change all sorts of things. Font color, maybe we'll make that white and the border is black by default. Maybe I'll make this an Arial Bold font as well. Say Arial Bold. Let's move this further down. Let's maybe make that 80. Let's also say score label dot draw border. Let's make that true. I think this should look a little bit better. Oh, I need to change the font color as well. Let's see, score label dot font color equals color dot white. All right, and let's go ahead and run again. Hey, fantastic, that looks pretty good. All right, and now we can go ahead and collect those stars. Very nice. All right, so we've created our next new mechanic. Right? They are now collectible objects, and you can earn points in the game. Fantastic. That's a good breaking point, I think, for this video. All right, thank you for watching.